that before I chat to my next guest, he's going to come out and sing for you the brilliant The Lost Art of Murder. Will you please welcome Pete Doherty? <laughs> Washed up in paradise Just like before She never used to mind I lost my phone in paradise and What's a nice day for a murder Will you call yourself a killer boy But the only thing you're killing is your time Nothing absurd And bird is just a burden To your heart, your soul, your body, spirit and mind I don't look at me like that She won't take you back You said too much You've been too unkind Get up off your back Stop smoking that You could change your life do you think you'll change your mind? Could roll a four, could roll a nine Find yourself washed up in paradise no light before, no light behind Someone else washed up in paradise and What's a nice day for a murder? You call yourself a killer The only thing you're killing now is time There's nothing absurd and bird is just a burden To your heart, your soul, your body, spirit and mind I don't look at me like that She won't take you back You said too much You've been too unkind Get up off your back Stop smoking that You could change your life Do you think you'll change their mind? Ducky, ladies and gentlemen. Pete, that sounded great. That sounded great. Well, I love it. That's a new one, isn't it? Yeah. Really nice. Take a seat. Hey, how nice was that? Wasn't that a great song? Was that song from the new Baby Sanders album? Would that be the new material coming out soon? Yeah, that, that song actually is... I think it's going on the album, and we've got, you know, a fellow called Bert Yanch? Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's playing on it, actually. Wow, that would be incredible. Yeah. Uh, and, and have you finished recording this? You're doing it now? Yeah. We're, we're all but done now. There's one song that needs tidying up a little bit. Okay. And Stukey titled, so... And uh, am I right thinking your life's a bit calmer now? Yeah, I know, my life is a lot calmer. There's one, there's one thing hanging over my head still. Um, it's a bit unfortunate. Uh, yeah, I mean, about a month and a half, I'm up in court again. Uh, same old. But on the whole, yeah, it's a lot calmer. Okay. And is that because you have been uh, living a quieter life or you haven't been caught leading the wilder life? <laughs> uh, what, what has brought about this period of comparative calm? Yeah, a combination of... Um, a change in like the way I live my life and like the fundamental ways of viewing life and acting and not getting caught yeah. as well. <laughs> that, that's the biggie really of course because <laughs> everyone everyone likes to let off a little steam in different ways and getting caught is often the issue yeah it's like a fellow in the shop yesterday actually he was a little Irish player had a pen behind his ear and a, a newspaper and he's like darkly 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 for f sake Keep it in your pants, you know? <laughs> you might learned by now. That's it. Yeah. And you just wanted a bounty or something, didn't you? You just wanted a <laughs> Do you get given advice on a regular basis by strangers? Yeah. 
yeah, people, people often, you know, they take me aside, take it upon themselves to yeah. show me the light and point me in the right direction. Normally, different places to hide things and... <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's something about you, because you're, you're, you're a very charming person. When, when someone meets you for the first time, I thought, I remember when I met you, you're very lovable, you're very charming. Um, and there is a, you, you know, people want to look after you, I think. Which is a nice thing, I guess. Mm. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not grooming you here. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just don't know what to say. Do you know? Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't, Thank you. Yeah. It wasn't with, no, but you know, it's a, uh, but I wonder whether that's a strange thing for you. I mean, have you noticed that? Is it is that a fair assessment by me there that, that people do kind of like feel protective towards you, even people who don't know you? Yeah, I and mean, but probably for every nine people that want to look after me, there's one that will just wind down the window and shout, "Ducky, you plum bag!" <laughs> Did you upset the Irish? It always seems to be Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've upset them as well this evening. I didn't mean any harm. Uh, what, what do you like most? Uh, do you like to write? Uh, do you like to perform? What is it that you enjoy uh, the most when it comes to your music? I don't know. Just um, finishing something, really. Like, you know, a sense of finishing something and achieving something and then... Yeah, and then performing it and having it received. And, uh, uh, what's the deal with the book of album that you've brought this out? Is this, a, is this, I've, I've got it, I've started reading it now. Is it, is it a diary? Is it fiction in there as well? Yeah, there's, oh, you've got one. Yeah, it's, I suppose there's bits of fiction in there. Uh, it's just from the age of 17, 18, I just kept notebooks really. Some of my thoughts and other people's thoughts. But a lot of this is very personal, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it, they, they couldn't print, they couldn't, they couldn't put in there. Um, and they had to have permission from people to, if they wanted to use other people's writing, because there's other people's writing in there. So the kind of stuff they couldn't print, why was that? Because it was, uh, you were being scathing about people, or you were talking about things they, they'd done that they shouldn't have done? Or well, things that I've done that maybe I shouldn't have done that... So illegal things? people didn't want me to have in, like, intimate things about other girls, which okay. is just not... You know, can't be, can't be having... So you're you know, kind of protecting and, other people, though, in a way there, by doing it? Uh, yeah, but there's so much, you can, you can see there's so many books, I was just, you know, take what you want and yeah. then, you know... So were you not, uh, did you think you might be embarrassed by what was in there? Were you oh, at all yeah, absolutely, completely, like, most of it are. I don't know, what can you do? Like, it's like, well, you can say no, <laughs> or not let them have your books in the first place. Yeah, but a lot of the stuff that I'm really embarrassed about, I mean, the publishers seem to think it's some of the best stuff, but I can't, I'm kind of embarrassed by the innocence a lot of the time, just, it's so... Yeah. What, naivety? Naivety and like, kind of a pompous naivety and... Yeah. But you know, and I, and I, I don't mean this, this to sound uh, patronising, but there is, when you're young, that's kind of the way you view the world somewhat. You know, yeah. it's only when you get older you get a bit more cynical and you get a little bit more guarded. Yeah. And what's charming about some of your work so far, I think, is there's a kind of innocence to it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I am innocent. Yeah. Like an illusion, but I mean, like, second to third, fourth to last time, fifth to last time I was nicked, the policeman actually that, had... That was quite a lot of numbers you had to go through. <laughs> <laughs> the policeman actually had a badge on saying, Pete Doherty is innocent. You know what I mean? The, the policeman had actually it put the cuffs on me, he had a badge on saying Pete Doherty is innocent. So what did, did you bring that to his attention? Did you say, why are you arresting me if you believe that? I was gobsmacked, you know what I mean? Did he get you to sign it afterwards? Has anyone, while arresting you, ever asked you to sign? Yeah. No. Yeah. Ask for your autograph while... No, I've been face down before like that. And he's been... You, know, <laughs> you don't mind afterwards if you sign something for me son, do you? <laughs> 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 and, and how do you sign it? You have to kind of do it like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you oblige, because you're a decent sort of fella. No, I was just like, yeah, just, well, just take the cuffs off and I'll do it now if you like. <laughs> Ready for me. Um, does it does it scare you? Does the the possibility of, of going inside jail does that to what extent does that concern you? Uh, yeah, it concerns me a lot. It's awful. Yeah. It's depressing. Like. I and mean, people they accuse me of you know they say oh, you you love it you know you I mean you must love it you you must love the drama being arrested. No, there's nothing not one aspect of it that I enjoy at all. It kind of goes without saying. I mean, it's just the most boring. 
that eats away at your existence. You, you know, what, what I, uh, I think must be, once again, looking from the outside in, the, the scrutiny that you live your life under, the kind of level of attention that you have, partly for being, I mean, it, it started when you were in the Libertines even as well, but now, of course, that you're one half of a very, very high-profile couple, you and Kate Moss together. The level of attention you have, that must be just, I would have thought, terribly difficult to, to, to live under. And at the same time, obviously, people are watching you and waiting for a slip, so you can't even hide away. Yeah, no, they are. It is a bit like that. People just waiting you know, for that. I mean, I just wonder why. Like, getting from the... F well, if, if I'm with Kate, anyway, getting from the front door to the car, you know what I mean, is hard enough in itself. I just wonder what. You've got 20 people taking a picture of someone coming out of the gate, getting into a car. Can you get away together much without people following you, without people knowing where you are, without people photographing you? Now and again, but when, um, when it does happen, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, all the more, it's all the more special and you cherish it more. Like, every now and again, there'll just there'll be no paps about. And, like, the other week, we went into uh, St James's Park about two in the morning because there was no one outside, so we just like, hot-footed it into town and went to the park and saw the Black Swan and walked by the palace. And then by the time we, got, by the time we strolled up to Piccadilly, Someone had spotted us, and someone had found someone, and then there was like a flock of paparazzi. So, so that's, but that's awful. It's yeah, it is awful. Uh, and there's nothing you can do about that, I guess. What about when you go away on holiday? Do they follow you there? It depends. It depends what sort of location. Because there was the story that you got married, and there were there photographs of you on the beach. Again and again and again. Yeah. And and you didn't get married, did you? Or no. did, did you? We, I think we, we did the third and the ninth time. <laughs> no, all the rest of it was like, no we didn't get married okay do you find it i mean I'm, I'm sure you understand why but do you find it strange that there's that level of interest in in your relationship over and above your music the fact that they just people want to know about you and kate together mm. I mean, do you find that easy to live with it's just the way it is isn't it it's just the way that's the reality of it people like a lot of the time it's just oh look uh, oh look it's Kate Moss's boyfriend which is like obviously really hurtful to my pride you know what I mean it's, like, it's not oh look there's that really tiny lyricist and Irish impersonator <laughs> <laughs> the UK's number one Irish impersonator <laughs> um, uh, but there must be obviously I suppose the upside is you're with someone who I'm guessing you love, and, and it must be nice waking up next to Kate Moss occasionally, <laughs> and it must be nice for her to wake up with you. I would have thought. Mm. Uh, let me ask you about the uh, the Libertines, mm. right? Because when I heard the first Libertines album, I thought, "Wow, this is a band I've been waiting for." I really got so excited for the Libertines, and then and then you went and did it. You went and do what so many great bands do. You split up, okay? Which is you know any number of reasons, I'm sure. It does look like, and I've loved the work you're doing with Baby Shambles. So don't get me wrong, but it does look like you and Carl might be getting back together again. Yeah, no, I, see, I seen him last week. We did um, Day in the Life for the Sgt Pepper covers album. And so you recorded a new version of it? Yeah, and we're, we're talking. Uh, although he does mumble a fair bit. But we're talking. Uh, we're getting on, I don't know. You know, I don't think we've ever really split up in a way. No, but, I think you did, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you misbehaved towards him a little bit, didn't you, Pete? I don't know where you get that from. You know? There's a couple of different stories, and one day the truth will come out. You know? uh, are you going to be performing live together again, though? Or are you going to be doing that? Because you did a gig a little while ago together, didn't you? Yeah, he came along to Hackney Empire and we played acoustically together. Um, I don't know. I did. Uh, we, we did talk about it the other day, and uh, I think he more or less said, you know, when he's when he's completely skinned, because things aren't going that, that well at the moment for him. <laughs> like, he will undoubtedly, you know get the tour on and that, but yeah. at the moment he's got the dirty pretty things. Yeah. And well, well, I like the dirty pretty things as well, and I like Baby Shambles as well, but there was something about the Libertines that I especially liked. Mm. And there was something about the two of you together, as often is the case when there are people who perhaps there's tension between them as well, but that seems to add to the, the joy when you're watching it, and there was something about the two of you together that was very special, I thought. Let's have a look. Hey, 
Dave, let me ask you. Who made the first move towards getting back together? The Sun, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> the Cohen Bun, bringing yeah. people together. Yeah. Let me ask you one question before you go, Pete. Because I often wonder this about bands and uh, talented individuals who, who seem, from the outside again, to be living life pretty much in the moment, which is not a bad way to live. But do you have a kind of plan? Do you think about where you'd like to be in a year, five years, ten years' time? Do you, ever, do you, do you approach your life in that way at all? No. <laughs> no. I don't know, but I was thinking maybe a little chat show, you know? <laughs> In a few years' time, is there ever a gap in the market? Oh. Yes. I, I wish you could stay longer. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, how lovely to have you again. Thank you very much for coming. I'm very fond of you. Thank yeah. you for coming on the programme. Pete Doherty, ladies and gentlemen. He's a great talent. Thank you for that. Pete Doherty, ladies and gentlemen. I shouldn't really say this now, but uh, I found out that the papers have gone through and I have officially adopted Pete. So. I would look after you, it'd be nice. Oh, there's Pete going in there. Thank you, Pete. Uh, thank you to all my guests, Bruce, Pete, and of course, Stern Quarter. Next week, I'll be joined by J.K. Rowling, giving a world-exclusive interview. Bob Hoskins will be here, Paul Weller, Graham Coxon, and the Arctic Monkey.